because again, that five on five thing is meant to be more like, you know, it's a push me, pull you to get to what you want. It's not a stand still kind of game because the closer you get, your range is such that your blows change because throwing a flat snap from here is basically impossible because by the time you extend your arm, you're going to hit him with a basket hilt. Okay. Now, how many of you are of that aware in your fight? Or are you just trying to apply the stick to the target? Okay. Those are the questions you pretty much have to answer for yourself. So that's the other thing about being mobile. You have to pay attention to what can I reach from here? Okay. I can face shot him. I can reach him with a thrust. I can reach that leg, which means I can reach this one. Okay. And so for that one movement, I understand that these targets are available. What can I reach around his back? Nothing. Not really. Okay. So you realize when you start to go to this diagonal on a half step, not a full step, you have to take into account which blows do I have on how much of my stick. Because a lot of people will only hit down here. So when you start trying to get used to doing passes where you're going to use that last three inches of the blade, and you intend on hitting Octa or whoever in the helmet, there has to be enough power in it boom, that you make sure it impacts. Because that's the other thing about body movement. If you do things late, right, or you do them early, okay, it's like, okay, so things aren't coordinated enough because I meant to reach for his head. But what I did was I actually threw the stick first and then stepped in. So when you're training, that's the other thing. Video cameras don't lie. The next best thing is mirrors. Because they're actually going to give you more information about what you're doing. The other problem is, is a lot of people, when they first start doing body movements, they will lean. So all of a sudden, this nice center that we were talking about before isn't there anymore. So be very aware. Did I just throw this shot, or did I just throw this shot? And notice the difference of where my foot was. Because again, you're telling yourself, I'm going off to that diagonal. So when you throw it, if it ends here, then that's really good. If it ends up over here, and you run that last three or four inches of the blade to hit him in the helmet, there's an issue. Fair enough? So the training aspect is there. We understand all that. Okay, so now let's go to some more practical ideas of how does body movement work, sword blow and return. Okay. So from here, how many different returns are there? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, right? Yeah, exactly. Be because, again, some of the quickest returns are nothing but a body movement. This is a return. Look at my hips on. Where's that? Where's that going next? It's obvious, right? So there's one return. So now, if I go from here and I take my again, I'm going to load the blade quick by stepping up and under. There's another return. The obvious teardrop to whichever portion of the body you want to go to. There's another one. The short teardrop, which is involved with a body movement. There's the other one. So all of a sudden you're starting to look and it's like, how many returns, how many returns are there to this, this really? You know, and it's like, oh geez, where am I going to move my body? And that's how obvious this becomes when you pay attention to it. And it's based on your style, based on your ability, based on how fast you are, based on your observation skills, is how many returns there really are. So now then you've seen them. Now then, object lessons, and I do them. Okay, now then that's training. So now if I'm going to move from there to practice, okay, now I need to get on the pal and practice it against, it's like, no, I lean on that one. Um, and doggone it, that, that right diagonal is more turning out to a right lateral diagonal. You know, and it's like, okay. But I do want to do it against an opponent now. So you get somebody experienced. Don't go grab your buddy. Go to the more experienced person and say, Your Grace, would you, you know, involve me in a, in a practice training session where I would like to practice this? 
and more likely he's going to say sure. <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden it's going to be one of those deals though where he's going to tell you at first I'm going to let you complete the movement, but ultimately we're headed to combat. And what, he, what he's going to do is the first time you, you say, okay, well, I'm going to practice my overhead return. And you do this, he's going to go, well, that's great. You accomplish that just fine. So the second, you know, you've, you've been at it for 10 minutes now, and he goes, okay, I'm now going to start moving and fighting this. So you have to be aware that once you do this and you step forward, he's going to be right here. Okay. Then the next one, he'll do something else, and you're going to load up, and you're going to be right there. The trick is, is that no matter what he does, the object lesson, even when you were training on the Pell, is if he does this, what's next? <coughs> right? If he comes forward, okay, now what am I, what am I going to do? Yeah. Right. But where? <coughs> and that's, that's the part you get to play, because you're not, when you really start doing this in fighting, and it steps up, right? You're going to try different things, and you're going to go after them, and you're going to see all of these wonderful positions that you can get into. And he's going to attack, and he's going to evade. But what's happening on the other side? Body. That's why you don't get your beginning buddy. Somebody you in your trash, or somebody who's equal to you. You don't go get them, because they're not the ones that can give you the lesson of what you're learning and attempting. Okay? That's the reason for it. A lot of times, we, if, if you go and prove it against your fighter buddy, that's just great. You roll it out in practice against your fighter buddy, that's just great. And then you come up here, right? And you roll it out and it just flat doesn't work, period. And if you don't turn it into a training session asking his grace, why are you doing that? said about that. But that's true in anything. No matter what you're training or practicing, if you go to do it against the top 2% sometime, sometime, okay, then you actually get the knowledge from that level of fighter all the way back to the beginner at home. You get to discern how well those work. You get to learn things like, okay, so if I change that direction, or by the way, who's the fastest guy in a kingdom? Is this Fen? Is he, is he the quickest? It's pretty fast. Is he, is, he really, is he really that quick? Okay, so you have to obviously, if you're a competitor, once again, we're going to go. I know I keep mentioning this. If you're the competitor, rather than the person that comes out every odd Sunday, you really want to know how well this is going to work against the fastest person in the kingdom. Because there's certain things, once again, you're not going to walk up into Sven's kill box, right? And movement-wise, he's pretty quick, too, isn't he? So you have to be aware out here, okay, at least based on that picture on her refrigerator, you have, to be, <laughs> you have to be aware out here that not only is this guy really quick with a sword, he's really quick with a body movement. So you're really not going to walk up to dare this person to hit you for two reasons. And those are the two reasons. He's really quick with a sword, he's really quick with a body movement, right? Now, some people like that, you may want to draw them to you, but you want to draw them off at this diagonal, right? And if they start moving towards you, then you start, yeah, it's like, here he comes, right? And I got exactly what I wanted. Why? Because I'm in line with him, and now I'm going to get offline with him, okay? And now I'm going to press the attack into his center, because you brought him to you. If you allow that individual who's that quick to attack while you're moving right straight at him, okay? How many movements is he gonna do? You have no idea. You don't know whether he's, his intent on his first movement is to kill you or just make you do this with your shield. Because somebody who's mobile and their sword and their body are trained together, you don't know where they're gonna end up. And if they're a reactionary fighter, they do not care what you give them. And that's all part of something to get really deep down in your head is that some of these excellent fighters, they're not standing there thinking about what you're doing. They don't care. You know, so if you think in your mind that, gee, I'm going to put this in his way by 